Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today I want to make a case for banning or at least nerfing Hanadu, Winged Wisdom and Brawl. This 3 mana 3-4 three, has flying and says creatures you control have. Whenever this creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it straight onto the battlefield untapped. Otherwise you can put it into your hand and this ability triggers only twice each turn, but it's twice each turn for each creature, so you can still enable it several times as long as you have enough creatures on the battlefield and then if we have an equipment on the battlefield for instance that can maybe equip for one mana if we find a land it enters untapped we can now use that land to tap for mana to move the equipment once again rinse and repeat and before you know it you have 10 lands on the battlefield and it's only turn three so Nado is pretty ridiculous. I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the breakdown. And the first one, as I alluded to, are equipment. We're playing as many cheap equipment as possible. These all equip for one mana. There's also the uh, leather armor that can equip for zero mana, but only once each turn. If you move into older formats, you have more cheap equipment like Shuko, Lightning Greaves, and Umbral Mantle that can equip for zero mana. Those would be even better with Nado, but we don't have those on Arena. So one mana equip costs will have to do. Then we also have a few other ways to target Nadu repeatedly, like our Sylvan Safekeeper and Unctus. Those can maybe sacrifice lands or pay life instead of having to pay mana, so that can also work out nicely. And then we've got lots of ways to protect Nadu from removal spells, even though if our opponent targets Nadu with removal, we'll still get to trigger the ability, so that can also maybe still put additional lands in play, making it easier to redeploy Nadu. And any broken commander usually has this quality where it sort of pays for its own commander attacks, and it's no different here. And then all these protection spells we can also still cast just to target Nadu and enable the ability, turning these into essentially one mana growth spirals, which is still pretty busted. Then we also have a few counter spells to stop the opponent's game plan. And then we've got some ramp cards as well. These are often creatures that can put extra lands in play or tap for mana. That way we can also start equipping them with our various equipment to trigger Nadu. And then we've got a lot of landfall payoffs, since of course having a lot of lands on the battlefield is nice, but what's even better is having creatures with landfall abilities in play, that way we get to enable those abilities over and over again while we keep going off with Nadu. And among our landfall synergies we have two drops like Bristly Bill and Roaring Earth giving us plus one counters with landfall, which can target our creatures in turn also enabling Nadu, so those are great. We have ways of generating additional mana with Lotus Cobra, Nissa, and Tireless Provisioner making treasures, so those can also unlock a lot of extra mana in one turn, making it easier to combo off. And then we've got ways to gain life, make tokens, draw cards, so lots of win conditions here as well. And then finally the miscellaneous section includes a bit more interaction, some spells we can cast for free, such as Ornithopter to have another creature we can start targeting. And then Confounding Conundrum is also pretty nice nowadays, with fetch lands requiring the opponent to wait until our turn to sacrifice them, otherwise they have to return a land back to their hand. And it can also be a way to maybe break the mirror match, as the opponent won't be able to keep all their lands on the battlefield that they put in play with Nadu. And then the mana base of course also has a lot of fetch lands to enable landfall twice on our various landfall synergies. So that's the deck in a nutshell. And then now for the deep dive, starting with our equipment, we have Bonesaw, which is zero mana to play, one mana to equip. Sylvan Safekeeper, as we mentioned, can sacrifice a land to target a creature, giving it Shroud until end of turn. Now Shroud is different from Hexproof, meaning we can't target that same creature again with our own abilities. So ideally it's the second Nadu trigger giving it Shroud. And then we've got more one mana equipment with Bone Splitter, Eater Virtue giving two extra power, the Boots giving one extra power, Haste, and Ward one. Leather Armor can equip for zero mana, but only once each turn. Lost Jite also pretty good, especially once it starts untapping our lands to make additional mana. Heirloom just plus one plus one, same as the uh, Short Sword. And then Injector to extra toughness. And then Swiftfoot Boots is two mana to play, but then also gives Hexproof and Haste, so it can also be a nice protection spell. And then finally Unctus, which requires Phyrexian mana to target our creatures, so it's either a blue mana or two life, so we can sort of exchange our life total for additional Nadu triggers. And then moving on to our protection spells, we've got some ways to give Hexproof with Dive Down, Shore Up, we've got you see a Guard Approach, which can sometimes also tamp down a creature, Blossoming Defense, Ranger's Guile, 
got royal treatment, leaving behind a royal roll token. And then a snakeskin veil gives us an extra plus one counter, safekeeping gains some life. And then a Tyvor stand also makes indestructible. And then we've got more protection with essence flux, which can flicker our creature, which can also maybe reset Nadu's ability. Then we've got slip out the back to phase out our creature, which is especially good in the face of a sweeper. We've got spell pierce as just a cheap counter spell, so probably should put that in the counter spell section instead. We've got. Uh, Let's see here, March of Swirling Mist, another way to phase out, can also maybe target multiple creatures. And then our counter spells, including Pact of Negation, which is especially powerful if we're already kind of going off and have multiple lands in play that can then pay for the Pact on the following turn. We've got Spell Peers, Wash Away for the opponent's commander, Veil of Summer can be very nice against blue decks or against black removal spells counter spell as well as mana drain and then a subtlety which we can also maybe cast for free if we evoke it not really a counter spell but can still delay a creature and then we have mana acceleration with mox amber which can then maybe help protect nadu the same turn we play it then both grazer and kami can put an extra land in play this is the only alchemy card i'm running in this deck we've got delighted halfling elvish mystic and lenor elves stamping for mana utopia sprawl to enchant our forest and then explore and grow spiral to play an extra land and draw and then arcane signet is still pretty good alongside a flare of cultivation which is nice alongside cards like arboreal grazer and kami as we can sacrifice them to help cultivate essentially and then our landfall payoffs, as we mentioned, include Bristly, Bill, and Roaring Earth to give us plus one counters, Cobra, Nissa, and Provisioner to make extra mana. And then the Nantuko can maybe enchant one of our creatures with the bestow ability to start making copies whenever a land enters, but we're also totally fine just making 1 1 insect tokens, which is similar to Skewed Swarm before it makes copies of itself, and that's of course another great way to go wide. And then a Tireless Tracker can make clue tokens for more card advantage. Corsair can gain life to maybe offset Unctus's ability. And then a Royal can start making 2-2 two -two tokens. And Tatiova gains life while drawing cards as well. So plenty of landfall payoffs here. And then our miscellaneous section has Ornithopter as another cheap creature we can start targeting. Brainstorm is great with all the fetch lanes as we can get rid of the cards we put back on top if we don't need them. Confounding Conundrum, as we mentioned, can be nice against other fetch lands and ramp decks. And then a Reclamation Sage and Force of Vigor, which we can maybe cast for free if we pitch a green spell, can take out artifacts and enchantments. And finally, a Finale of Devastation, which can tutor up some of our creatures, but we can also cast it for X equals 10 or more if we have a lot of mana available to hopefully just end the game by giving the team haste. And then our mana base has all the fetch lines we can get our hands on, except for, I guess, I'm not running Fabled Passage here, but we could add that one as well if we wanted to, just all the blue and green fetch lines, Hedge Maze and Breeding Pool as dual lands we can fetch up, alongside plenty of basics, and then our utility lands here, Ottawara and Boseju, Got a few creature lands with Mutavolt and Blink Moth Nexus. These can just tap and can animate themselves, so we have an additional creature we can start targeting if needed. Cavern of Souls to make Nado Encounterable can be important against blue decks. And then lots of mana fixing. And then I also like running these lands that let us surveil one or scry one when they enter, since that can maybe help keep a land on top of the deck, so we can keep comboing off once we start targeting our creatures with Nadu. So we've got Jalfern Void, Conduit Pylons, as well as Crystal Grotto. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ulalek, 5-color Eldrazi. Promising hand, just missing blue mana. But we've got most of our author cards we need. A landfall payoff, some equipment, potentially some ramp if we're willing to sacrifice Bill. But we might just wait until we have um, Bill in play and then Mox Amber can help cast a flare. Should be a decent matchup. And pass it back. Utopia Sprawl, I can still play here. And then cast either Nadu or Flare. I think we Flare. And then next turn we can uh, play Nadu and go off. Even though, I guess with the uh, Lost GT, we actually could have attacked and then untapped the land.
and pass the turn. GT also a pretty nice combo with the Utopia Sprawl since we can untap it to make two mana. And a Void Craw. Okay. So next turn they have quite a bit of mana. But we should be alright. Play Nadu. Windswap Teeth is two landfall triggers with Bill as well. This also triggers Nadu. And then we wouldn't mind finding some more creatures to keep leveraging Nadu's ability. There we go. So maybe step one attack with the Bristly Bill. So we've used Nandu's ability on Bill once already. This will be the second one. Damage happens. And then I can move one of my equipment onto the Elf. That's the second trigger. Now we can use GT to untap our land. Making two mana. Play Kami. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Play Kami, can equip that twice as well. Rinse and repeat. Before you know it, we've got 20 lands on the battlefield. And then if we maybe find some other landfall payoffs in the meantime, we can pretty easily win. Although Bill giving us plus one counters might already be enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Joyra, Weatherlight, Captain. And uh, what do we think of our hand? So we've got equipment, creature, protection. Unctus can also activate Nadu's ability. So yeah, could be all right. If they have a counter spell for Nadu, things can get maybe a bit more complicated. But for now, Bone Splitter can play Ornithopter as well. And if we don't have anything going on next turn, I can hit for two. Okay. And then Foothills can get our Surveil land. Opponent taps out for the Iron Crag. Don't expect a ton of spot removal spells out of their deck necessarily. So we could attempt to play Nadu already, and now with Mox Amber that's perfect, since we'll still have a protection spell up. So that's ideal. So I could already move the Bone Splitter in the hopes of hitting a land to keep comboing. Given that we have a Ranger's Guile and March in hand, probably don't need to take that risk. But if they tap out once again, I might just cast a Guile to trigger Nadu. Could also see them just play Joyra, followed by some cheap artifacts to draw. Yep, there's Joyra. So that happens. And an Ornithopter gets to draw right away. And a Mox Amber, alright. Opponent's got all the free artifacts. And some good ones at that. Okay, so they immediately got to draw three. Anything else? Hit a land. Probably going to hang on to the march. And Conundrum not going to be at its best in this matchup. So I'll play Unctus. Probably could have tapped a little bit differently, but that's alright. So I'll just pay two life. Now we could also start using Eater Virtue. 
Although I don't mind exchanging some more life total here. It's a second time. And then... Can go for Eater, equip Nadu. Attack. Get rid of the Conundrum. And then maybe I do need the March, even though this kind of insurance here in case of a removal spell. What don't I need? Yeah, maybe I can get rid of the Colony Garden actually. Both landfall creatures seem pretty good. Even though Colony Garden would also be nice, giving us an extra creature. Bone and Chumps. And then I can still move Eater onto Unctus. Find another equipment. Unctus can also target itself, I suppose. And find a dive down. Okay, that's good enough for now. Keep my fetch line to go with Provisioner. Archive resolves. Could have also used March on Joyra just to have it gone for a turn so they don't get to draw a bunch. But uh, I think that's acceptable. Is their opponent drawing quite a few cards? Developing their mana. But I'm hoping we can just close it out right now. And then play lands, make a treasure. Play Tantiova. Fetch, get an island. Make a treasure, draw a card. So we haven't triggered Nidu's ability anywhere yet. Have some life to spare. So we're not hitting the lands we're hoping for here. Alright, can keep going. There we go. So we've targeted everything once now. And now I can maybe go with Nonsuko. How much damage do we have if we attack? 11. Got a couple pump effects, but not quite enough for lethal. I guess we can also give haste with the boots. That's pretty good. Hasty Tatiova. Still have quite a bit of mana to spare. So, yeah, I guess I can just march the uh, only blocker and then attack all out. And that should do it. Okay. I have Pact of Negation as backup. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Anim Pakal, and we've got a very nice hand. Kami into a Lotus Cobra. Got several equipment. So just gotta keep hitting our land drops, ideally find a fetch land. Utopia Sprawl's not bad either, so we can go Cobra, Island, make green, and then Sprawl the forests and still play GT. And then GT plus Utopia Sprawl is also pretty good, as we can untap our land to maybe make two additional mana. 
As per Sentinel, doesn't matter too much anymore. Okay. So we can stick to the plan. Play Nadu. And then maybe start with GTA on Kami. Find a Scute Swarm, that's going to be our win condition. Okay, maybe move once to the Cobra and then back onto the Kami. And then attack with, at the very least, Kami. And now we could still explore, even though it does trigger Sentinel. Yeah, I'm okay with them drawing a card, I guess. And then just send the Kami, I think. Our opponent accepts the trade, but we still get a counter on the GTA. So, untap our land. And with our remaining mana, we can still equip. Try and keep a land on top, don't need more equipment. Yeah, this is just silly. Could already play Scute Swarm, but I'll wait until we're guaranteed to make a copy. And then move on to Nadu. And on to Nadu once again. Make more mana. Can now go for Grazer. Move GT onto Grazer. And again. Alright, pass a turn with how many lands on the battlefield versus the opponent's two lands. This is not normal. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we've uh, finally found a worthy opponent, the Nadu Mirror Match. And our hands, decent. Shore up, not really necessary in the matchup, so it's mostly about a ramp and then having enough enablers. But Provisioner is also very good if we get it going. So yeah, as long as we can hit our land drops, this hand could work out. Can go Grazer, put in Hedge Maze. Still need to be wary of counter spells. Keep the land. And our opponent is keeping up two mana. So playing Nadu would make more sense curve-wise, since Provisioner is better if we can enable Landfall right away. But I guess we could also just cast a Provisioner, and that's still fine if it resolves, of course. It does. Not in a hurry to play Ornithopter, but we can also sort of use it to test out if our opponent's holding counter spells. So our opponent still missing an equipment, perhaps? Colosseum could also be a nice addition. And there's Nadu with protection backup, I have to imagine. But now it's all about just comboing off with Nadu. So if I go Cobra, play a land, I have three mana plus a treasure, I can play Nadu, but then a, a little bit short of... Um, Necessarily comboing with a short sword, but I still kind of like it. Could just cast Shore up as well. And then if I hit a land, I can just go off. They might have a wash away. They don't. Yeah, let's just go for it. Can pump the Provisioner. Although I don't know if I would be attacking with it here. Since they might have their own pump spell. Eh, Royal Treatment Nadu. Opponent did find a land, so they can maybe keep going. And a counter spell, so don't get to completely go off. And we'll see if our opponent can do one better. 
But next turn with Short Sword and Counterspell Backup, we should be in business. Especially with two landfall creatures in play. A Roaring Earth is a good enabler and payoff. Might have to jump with the Grazer if our opponent makes a huge Nadu. Do they have another creature to keep going since they've already triggered this twice? Alright, just an attack for seven. I'll take it. And get to untap. Okay, so gotta protect the short sword from a counter spell. That resolves. And I'll maybe just go left to right to keep it simple. Alright, opponent's got a colony ambush. That uh, sadly resolves. Had we found a land, then we get to enable landfall and we can actually counterspell. But now we don't. So yeah, that's a pretty big setback. Just failing to find a land here. Although I guess now we did. So we still get to make some mana. So yeah, our opponent timed the ambush pretty well. Now Conundrum could be a way to maybe punish the opponent from completely going off. Uh, so don't hate that idea. And then we still keep up Counterspell in case they maybe find an equipment. I guess Tatiova is also worth countering. Alright, let's just pass. After maybe attacking, if they have an untap trick, that could be awkward. So maybe I'm not in a hurry to attack. So they can still fetch, enable Roaring Earth, triggering Nadu, since they haven't enabled it yet this turn. And then I have to counter Tatiova, and then hope to draw land so we can play Nadu and keep going. Opponent decides to not fetch yet. And I have to fight over Tatiova, it's too scary if it resolves. That works. So now our opponent fetches, triggering Roaring Earth. Finds an elf. But they won't be able to put additional lanes in play and keep them in play. Although they can always return a tapped lane, of course. I'll take another eight. And we did find a land. Okay, so step one, maybe Temple. Don't think we're playing Bristly Bill, or are we? I mean, I guess I could. Let's see what's on top of the deck first with a Scry. Cavern of Souls. Okay, that we can keep. So, play Nadu, hoping it resolves. Next turn I can play an Uncounterable Nadu. Okay, perfect. Then move short sword. We'll go right to left, maybe. And name wizard. And now we're off to the races. Play bill. Move the equipment. So that's now do twice. And then we get another attempt here. Please hit a land. We did not, although I guess Flare of Cultivation still works. Might have to sacrifice my Grazer, even though it's a Reach creature. Can still play Ornithopter as an extra blocker. So that's Cobra a second time. Play 
play a Kami. First one for Provisioner. Probably should play Ornithopter. Pact isn't bad. Could also make food at some point, but for now still prioritizing the extra mana. So still have Kami, Bill and Ornithopter we can trigger. And could play Tatiova, but then I don't have as much mana available, so I'll still try and get a bit more mana going first. Alright, now we can safely deploy Tatiova. So that's Bill triggered twice. Play Tatiova. Fetch. Start with Kami. Kami twice. Start with Ornithopter. That resolves. Their opponent's also having some fun now. Alright, they hit a lot of lanes in a row. But they will have to pick a bunch back up. So yeah, I think that's the second one on Ornithopter done. We can move on to Tatiova and then see if we find more creatures. Okay, so step one, Utopia Sprawl. Reclamation Sage can destroy Roaring Earth. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, from this position we should have firm control over the game with multiple counter spells and lots of mana available. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Renzo, the powerful alchemy commander. Our hands got both mana drain and counter spell, but no green mana. So this one's kind of a close call. I think we can do better. We also were missing an equipment. This time we've got plenty of equipment. No other creatures, no mana acceleration. So kind of a different problem here. I'll take a mulligan. This is better. Keep elves, bone saw, and then probably bristly bill over courser. But it's a tough call between the two. Fetch breeding pool. Play elves. And then I think I still play the Bone Saw in case of a discard spell. I want to have it on the battlefield. Okay, so we can already play a Nadu if we'd like. Or we can wait a turn to play it and immediately get some equip value. But uh, I think I'm okay playing it now. If they take it out, we still get to trigger a Nadu, maybe put a land in play. And our opponent's got Feed the Swarm. And there's our land. So we can immediately replay Nadu. 
Now that we drew safekeeping, I could be convinced to wait a turn. But I'm just gonna make them have it again. Shildra's Edict, just sank the elf. And we should be in business. And that's enough for a concession. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gishoth, Dinosaur Ramp. This hand has some decent tools, with Unctus mainly, but no early mine acceleration, so I think we can do better. And this is better. Just missing an equipment, perhaps. Safekeeper still maybe a way to go off with Nadu, but it's not our first choice. Opponent's got to Mystic as well. There is an argument for getting a Breeding Pool right away in case we need double blue next turn. And now a Halfling as well, so our opponent's off to a very good start as well. If we want to protect Nadu from maybe a source to Plowshares, we could just grow Spiral and then get a Safekeeper in play perhaps. I'll just get an island here. And then wash away a 1 mana counter spell for their 8 mana commander is also pretty nice. Still have subtlety, which we can evoke pitching UC guard approach. Could also use this to tap down a mana creature for a turn. Or maybe Gishoth before it gets a chance to attack. Alright, Cavern of Souls now will complicate matters. Can still use Subtlety since it doesn't technically counter, but I'm not going to waste it on the Firstborn. Opponent's going to pay, so then I might see a guard approach here, as opposed to sacking a land to the Safekeeper. Okay. And then I guess her opponent also had the halfling anyway to maybe make Gishoth uncounterable. So yeah, Wash Away was probably not going to be at its best. Do get to untap, find a short sword, that's nice. So play Nadu. Short sword. And not going to start sacrificing lands just yet. Can hit for one. But then next turn, maybe finally getting Lotus Cobra allows me to generate more mana. Opponent should be close to casting Gishoth here. Four, five, six, seven, sort of. And now a Ribjar Raptor. That's fine. Take our turn. And then, yeah, I'm kind of liking the finale for Cobra plan. Could also play land and get Nissa instead, but then I will be tapped out as opposed to still enabling landfall. Equip Naru. Or we can start with some of our other creatures and eventually end up with Sword on Nadu. Mox Amber's not bad. So this is the second Cobra trigger. Move on to Lanor Elves. Could brainstorm, but probably want to wait until we can cast it and then shuffle afterwards. So this is our Second Lenor Elves trigger. First Safekeeper trigger. Try and keep land on top. Second Safekeeper trigger. Get an extra creature we can start equipping. Doesn't say non-token, so yeah. Let's 
So second plants. And then now I'll start sacking lands to Safekeeper. Can do on Nadu. Find a land. And now we can move the sword. I guess it's Shroud, so I guess that prevents me from targeting Nadu a second time. Fair enough. So in that case, just attack with Nadu. And then... I can always uh, brainstorm if needed, but... Can maybe save my fetch land until next turn. Okay. Maybe could have used a uh, sword on Nadu a little sooner instead of back on the plant. In case we failed, so we got in for one more damage. Opponent attacks all out. Might imply that a sweeper's incoming. And our opponent explodes. All right, fair enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ulamog, and this hand's great. Got an equipment, ramp, even some artifact removal, which will certainly come in handy. And uh, I'll start by getting just a forest. And then we can play a safekeeper now, which is also maybe a way to combo off. Do need to sacrifice a land to enable it, so... It's better if we have a landfall payoff in play already. Okay, we can explore. And then still play Kami. And then we already have multiple creatures in play, we can start equipping. Thought Knots can probably take the Reclamation Sage, but yeah, I have everything I need on the battlefield already. Goes for a Tyvar Stand, actually. Although we have a Safekeeper to keep Nadu safe, and now a Force of Vigor could also be an answer to Ornithopter. But let's start with Nadu. Fetch an island. And then equip. Did not find a land right away. So now the question is do we want to use Safekeeper to keep enabling Nadu? And do I want to use Force of Vigor on just an Ornithopter? I think I just pass the turn for now and keep my lands and they might present another artifact and then force looks better. All right, mirror convert. So now I could just force a vigor in the opponent's turn, which is a pretty nice tempo play. Get to untap. And subtlety is not bad either. So I'll just start by equipping, I guess, the Kami. I do want to end up with Bonesaw on Nadu itself, ideally. But we can equip the creature that's already equipped. And yeah, opponent has seen enough, having just lost her to a ramp artifacts. I can understand. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nashi, which can uh, synergize with a legendaries and rats. Definitely have a keeper here. Okay, maybe start with Grotto, play GT, and then next turn explore into Safekeeper. Yeah, that's fine. And then Kami, I don't mind. So now we can go explore into Kami instead. Oh no, opponent's got an answer to my artifact here with collective resistance, so we'll need to find kind of a replacement equipment.
And I can put in the Jalfren Void to scry. And Odawara, not really what I need, even though it is maybe an extra blue source so I could play now to keep up March. And Brainstorm is a decent combo with our fetch land. Opponents keeping up three mana, so possible they have an answer to Nadu, in which case I don't want to play it right now. So sure, we'll brainstorm. And then Veil of Summer should be good. Could get rid of the Safekeeper, even though it's sort of an enabler for Nadu. Still feel like uh, Spell Pierce is going to have good value, but I kind of prefer Veil and Provisioner, and then. March is a bit more versatile than Spell Pierce, perhaps. But I don't have to shuffle if I don't want to. Could just wait here. And then next turn can play Nadu with Veil of Summer backup. Or we can play Provisioner and then get an extra treasure out of it too. Close call. Opponent's keeping up four mana. Going Nadu with Veil seems decent, so maybe fine to just fetch a Hedge Maze. And then probably fine with a land. So play Nadu maybe after playing Command Tower. Opponent tries to counter, we Veil of Summer. And then we still have March available. Okay, so just waiting for a way to repeatedly target Nadu. Toxic Deluge. Okay, so March for one. And the Pact of Negation. Well, opponent gets to wipe my board, but next turn they'll have to pay for Pact. And I can just replay Nadu in the meantime. And another Elf. So, yeah, not the best set of draws so far, but Provisioner land Nadu is an option. Or I can just play some more Elves since Nadu is not doing much at the moment. And then we can play now do once the opponent's actually tapped out, since yeah, they could still have a two mana removal spell. Okay, so we're kind of on empty here, but it only takes a simple equipment to completely take over. Opponent's also mostly on empty. Bill can also help enable Nadu as soon as we hit some additional land drops, so that's pretty good. Play Nadu, play Bill, hit for two. Poseidon also would have been an answer to an equipment, so they must have some three mana play if they're willing to run it out. Winds of Teeth gives us some build triggers, and that in turn also triggers Nadu. Don't have to target Nadu itself. Can go for Bill. And then the five mana ability can also double our counters. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another 5-color Heldrazi deck. Could use an equipment here, we've got a force which can likely take care of some artifacts, assuming we find another green card to pitch to it, or I guess we can just cast it for 4. So yeah, don't actually hate it. Conundrum could also punish fetch lanes, and then if they do have some removal, it's nice to have an essence flux. So mostly looking for equipment. Lenor Elves is probably good enough to keep still. Can play Signet and two Elves. And then the Misty can also get our Surveil land. Opponent's good to Halfling. And 
and their own signet. Cobra is quite powerful here. So, Cobra into Misty. And then play Conundrum. And there is our equipment. Still fine to play Nadu. Don't expect it to get removed here. And then next turn we might be able to combo off with a Lotus Cobra giving us additional mana. Yeah, there's a Marsh Flat, so they're gonna find out that it's not the best in the face of a Conundrum, so they'll have to wait until my turn to sacrifice it. Null Drifter draws two. And a Brainstorm. Okay, so step one, Heirloom. Opponent fetches. And start equipping. Can also equip the same creature. We don't have to necessarily move the equipment. But uh, yeah, as soon as we hit a land, we essentially make two mana thanks to Lotus Cobra. And then we'll find some more cheap creatures we can keep equipping. So we can find more creatures we can equip twice. And then before you know it, we'll have 10 plus lands on the battlefield. Alright, so we got to combo off with Nadu, and in its current iteration the card feels a little bit too pushed, so hopefully something gets done about it, whether that means pushing Nadu into the Hell queue as soon as possible, where it can play against Ragavan and Tarasco, even though it's probably still gonna come out on top there, or we could maybe see a digital nerf of Nadu, where it only triggers once per turn as opposed to twice, maybe the land enters tapped as opposed to untapped, or maybe it doesn't trigger for each creature you control, but only for Nadu itself. There's a lot of ways to tweak it, but right now it just feels a little bit too powerful and I'm not looking forward to facing this in the Brawl queue in the foreseeable future, since I don't think it's realistic to adapt your deck to have a decent matchup against Nadu, other than including a boatload of counter spells. So hopefully that doesn't mean we'll have to instantly concede to Nadu if we face it, because that's just gonna waste everyone's time and it's no fun for anyone. So hopefully we'll see a solution from Wizards. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.